It's inevitable that there's going to be some major event that happens in this world that will be shocking, dramatic, and scary for both children and adults. It'll be out there on our smartphones, our computers, our television sets. It'll be in the news. And when breaking news happens, parents need to be prepared to help their kids get through it because it's not something that they're prepared to process themselves. Look, you've all watched the news. They're good. They're very good. They've got ticker tape going on below them. They, they got videos playing in the background. They have a very serious look on their face. And, and all of these things cannot help but to create a fight or flight response in a person of any age. What that means is that cortisol levels, well, they're, they're up. Norepinephrine is up. Your heart is stressed a little bit. And that's OK if there's a true threat. But if there's not a true threat, to always be in that state, it, it's not good for us. It makes us sicker. And kids are particularly vulnerable to this because their fight or flight systems are more easily triggered. So they need our help. Some practical tips, okay? First, think about your kids developmentally and have a different approach for preschoolers, school age kids, teens, and young adults. It's important for kids to limit their exposure, but how much you limit that exposure will depend on, on where they are developmentally. For younger kids, say two to four year olds, you're not going to let them watch TV. You're just going to turn the TV off. They don't need exposure to things like school shooters or terrorist attacks. For a school-age child, well, you can expect that they will have seen it. So for them to ask, did you hear about the news today? And if they say yes, well, you can follow up with, well, what'd you hear? Or what'd you know? And, and then have a conversation. And once you've discussed it, you still want to limit their exposure. Get them running outside, playing games, or working on schoolwork. And then for teens, not only can you expect that they will have seen it, but you can get into conversations with them that are much more nuanced, whether they be about gun control, about motives, about why someone might do something like this. With adolescents, you may even want to sit them in front of the news and watch it with them, and then talk to them. It's helpful for teenagers to talk about their concerns, and they can do it at a fairly advanced level. And that leads us to our next tip, which is this, vet the news. Because all news is presented as breaking, kids have a hard time looking away from it, so they need our help. Now, news organizations are so worried about being scooped that sometimes they'll actually present a story before they've done the research necessary. But you can do it. It just takes a triangulated internet search. If you see it in two or three places, and if it's particularly unnerving, then you might present it to your kid in your own words and say, look, if you're gonna watch the news, Let's watch it together. So, so vet the news. Make sure it's accurate. Talk about these things with your kids and then limit the exposure as necessary. At the end of the day, what kids are going to want to know is, am I safe? Are you safe? And how is this going to affect our daily lives? One of the reasons breaking news can be so disruptive is that it keeps kids from engaging in the activities that they're supposed to be doing, whether that be homework, playing sports, seeing friends, or taking part in creative activities. No matter what the breaking news, it's important that you do your best to stick to normal routines because all kids need structure. And the final tip, look, take care of yourself. Kids of all ages are going to be able to pick up on it if you're upset or if you're anxious. Well, it's not a problem to express your feelings. It's important to find ways to calm yourself down. Just like when you're on an airplane and a flight attendant says to put on the mask you know, on yourself before helping the person next to you, that's exactly what parents need to do. All the research has shown that helping your children involves being calm and emotionally stable. Be engaged with other people. Talk with your partner, your spouse, neighbors, and friends. Do what you need to do to calm yourself down, whether that's going for a run, meditating, or just listening to music. Find a way to help yourself, and that will go a long ways towards helping your kids through difficult times. He's Steve Schlossman. And he's Gene Bresson. And we're the MGH Clay Center and hope that our conversation will help you have yours.